It's no secret that the once popular Netflix series The Witcher is experiencing a fall from grace ever since its third season was released. And make no mistake, the departure of our beloved and renowned star Henry Cavill isn't the only reason that the viewership and ratings are plummeting. The sloppy writing, confusing timelines, unqualified production team, and inconsistencies to the source material have been staring at us in the face from the first episode. Netflix viewers and fans of the book series in particular are furious at this complete debacle. Let's boil down all the potential reasons behind why The Witcher is losing its fan base. As most of you already know, The Witcher is a dark and gritty fantasy show based on the famous novel series written by Polish author Andrzej Sapkowski in various video games of the same name. The plot follows the story of Geralt of Rivia and his life becomes entangled with Yennefer of Wengerberg and Princess Cirilla in the fictional world The Continent. As of late, the viewership stats of the third season have gone down 15% as compared to those of the second season, or worse yet, season 3 has also dropped 60% in viewership just over the course of the first five episodes. The biggest reason for this that we can see is one that has been plaguing the show since the very beginning. It's divergence from the book series. Diehard fans and audiences always love it when an adaptation is true to the source material, and The Witcher disregards that trend more often than not. Season 2, in particular, veered off from the original plot and into narratives that were unnecessary in furthering the main story and were in fact harmful to the show as a whole. Season 3 has been reported to make a weak effort in that regard, but the damage has been done. Some of the established and striking differences include the prominent roles of the mages in the world of The Witcher. The books don't really introduce the importance of the wizards or their organizational structure until the second book. Time of concept, but the show presents them pretty early on. In fact, the whole first season of the show is primarily centered around the Aratusa School of Sorcery. This gives us a more fleshed out backstory for Yennefer and the Brotherhood of Sorcerers and such. Another major difference is with Radovid's character, who is the son of King Vizimir in the books rather than his younger brother. Netflix changed his character majorly, putting him in a romantic relationship with Yaskier, presumably to endorse inclusivity. Similarly, in the books, Vilschwurz never kidnaps young girls from Eretusa to conduct disturbing experiments on them. This was added to the show merely for shock value. This brings us to the next big factor in The Witcher's downfall, the departure of Henry Cavill. It's the end of an era with Geralt of Rivia. Cavill is perfectly cast as Geralt and he plays him incredibly, so fans are not taking the news of his going away very well. In the beginning, it was thought that Henry Cavill was leaving to focus more on his movie career with the announcement of his recasting as Superman, which was understandable. But when that plan didn't go well either, with David Cornsweet securing the role instead, fans were very upset and frustrated. The real reason, however, according to some sources, is that Cavill purposely left the show because of the tensions with the showrunners. Yeah, but I'm going to talk about what it was like filming my final season, and I actually just want to talk about my co-stars here. Cavill was, uh, is, a big nerd and a super fan of the Witcher books before landing the role, and he disagreed with the way that Hisrich and her writing team were adapting the series. Some claim that the writers actively disliked and mocked the source material, which was a recipe for disaster. Cavill even objected to Hisrich writing some meta-comedy about the death of Geralt's horse Roach during shooting. So, these rumors might not be a long way off. Liam Hemsworth has been chosen to take Cavill's place as Geralt. The change is palpable enough that it does not sit very well with fans. One could almost be forgiven for assuming that a show called The Witcher would primarily be about The Witcher. But Lara Hisrich and her team of writers have somehow managed to sideline Geralt in his own show. Most of season 1 was about Yennefer, and season 2's main narrative was Ciri and her origins. Season 3 shows mostly the two of them getting closer and working together to survive, while Geralt is sent on a side quest like a supporting character, which audiences are not happy about. Fans have no choice but to speculate that this could be due to the resentment building between Cavill and the showrunners. The casting director for The Witcher, Sophia Holland, recently talked about her thought process when casting for fantasy shows. She felt the need to challenge what was considered the standard of beauty by casting women of color in powerful roles. There is nothing wrong with giving diverse actors an opportunity to be on the big screen, but a fictional northern European fantasy setting is not the right place for that. 
By using this opportunity to further her own political agenda, she damaged the credibility of the show which resulted in varying characters that did not match the climate or landscapes of their origins. Moreover, the architecture and cultural elements were not developed enough to be distinctive of the geographical locations throughout the show. While fans may be divided over the impressions of the third season of The Witcher, one thing everyone can agree on is that The Witcher Blood Origins should never have seen the light of day. This Netflix original series is a prequel to The Witcher, set some 1200 years before the events of the main series. It attempts to explain the conjunction of the spheres, a supernatural clashing of worlds and timelines that leads to the arrival of humans and other vicious monsters on the continent, as well as the origins of the very first Witcher in the span of four episodes. Not only was this series released at the worst possible time, but it also shows what the writing team will come up with when they have no source material to adhere to and ideas like inclusivity, women empowerment, and LGBT representation override the actual plot. Blood Origins has also suffered great criticism about the lack of originality and critically underdeveloped characters that lack depth. One review said, Honestly, this took me by surprise. I knew that the series was having trouble after it strayed so far away from the source material and figured that it would be bad without Henry Cavill, but wow, I had no idea it could be this bad. What's audacious is Witcher's producer Tomek Bajinski's response to the failing ratings and viewership rate. In a recent interview with Polish news site Wyborksa, Tomek explained that the script rewrite after behind-the-scenes events such as an actor falling sick led to controversial changes in the plot. And while he understands that fans of the books would be hurt, the decision to simplify plot points like The Witcher's expansive geopolitics is often necessary when a series is made for a huge mass of viewers with different experiences from different parts of the world and a large part of them are Americans? According to Beginsky, it's painful for us and for me too, but the higher level of nuance and complexity will have a smaller range. It won't reach people. Sometimes it may go too far, but we have to make these decisions and accept them. This is not the first time he has made such an insulting remark and blamed American sensibilities for his failures in substandard plots. In an interview with Polish YouTube channel Imponderabilia, Bajinski singled out the reason for Season 2's low viewership to be younger viewers with <laughs> who frequent social media sites like YouTube and TikTok and have short attention spans. With all these things happening, it's no surprise that The Witcher is losing its fanbase. But now the question is, will the new Witcher, Liam Hemsworth, be able to save this disaster of a show? And what can we expect from him in the new season? The executive producers have promised the viewers the show will deliver a flawless and lore-accurate transition from Cavill to Hemsworth in Season 4 and that the show does not plan on simply ignoring the change. As for Liam, I think we can trust the words of Joey Bately, who plays Yaskier, when he says, I think he's just using this time before the shoot to train and to study all the books and throw himself into this. No one can ask for anything more than just complete commitment to this role and that's what he's doing. We're all really excited. What are your thoughts? Do you think The Witcher will regain its fame and reputation despite Henry Cavill's departure? Let us know. We'll see you in our next video.